Welcome back to Straight Talk. I'm Laurel Porter, and welcome once again to my guest, Oregon First District Congresswoman Suzanne Bonamici. Welcome back. It's great to have you, you here. Great to be here. Let's talk about some other topics that you're sure. working on in Congress. You're the chair of the Subcommittee on Civil Rights and Human Services, yes. which has jurisdiction over the Older Americans Act. Right. And you've worked hard to update the Older Americans yes. Act. Legislation recently passed out of your subcommittee going to the House floor. Tell me the right. importance of the Older Americans Act and this update. Sure, it's so important and I've been working on it for several years. I worked on the 2016 version. Uh, this is so important because as seniors are living longer, uh, we wanna make sure that their final years, the, their years that they're living are lives with dignity. And so there's a lot of ways that we can be part of that through this federal policy in the Older Americans Act, through programs like Meals on Wheels. And I've delivered Meals on Wheels, both in suburban areas and in rural areas. And it isn't just the nutrition, it's the social contact. It's having someone there to talk to and check in on those seniors. Social isolation is a real challenge uh, with older Americans. And so Meals on Wheels is a program that helps with that. Also community meal programs. I just went out in Forest Grove and visited with seniors who came together at the community center to have lunch together. And this gives them an opportunity to have, again, social interaction, to get a good meal, to be able to have those conversations, um, and then caregiver support. I help take care of my mom. She's 91 years old now. She's a two-time cancer survivor, and she needs a lot of help uh, and programs that support caregivers. I know how important caregiving is. So again, as people age. This is your, your mom, that's my mom here. Yeah, just the other day. What's her name? Her name is Marie. Marie, and we were up at the Arboretum when I took that picture the other day. So as caregivers, um, they, they play that important role. And as seniors are living longer, having these programs to, to help them live their, first of all, stay at home as long as possible, but live their lives with dignity, it's a good investment to keep people out of um, institutional facilities or long-term care facilities as long as possible and give them that community and social support they need. So this new update called the Dignity and Aging Act uh, passed with strong bipartisan and support. I worked really hard to make sure that it stayed bipartisan through the committee process because we want this to go smoothly through the House and hopefully through the Senate right away. So Are you optimistic start. that it will get to the yes. President's desk and that he will yes. sign it? Yes, I am optimistic because it is so bipartisan and because everyone knows the value of, of supporting our seniors because we know if, there's, if they can stay in their homes, if they can get that meal, that community support, that interaction, they live their years with dignity and it's healthier for them as well. So I'm excited about that. I'm hopeful we can get that over the finish line, the uh, Aging with Dignity Act um, soon. So even if you do get it passed, you have said there's still more work to be done. Yes. What else would you like to see happen? Well, we wanna make sure that all communities, everyone who is being served or who is eligible to be served is being served. Um, there's still some at-risk people, whether they be immigrant communities or LGBTQ seniors who are less likely to have family, a children in a support network, we wanna make sure uh, that everyone uh, is is getting the services they need. We made some progress with this bill, but there's still some more work to do. But I'm very optimistic that we'll get this over the finish line and into law to help. We get an increase in funding in each of the programs, which is significant because there are more people who are living longer, and that's a good thing. Another thing that's been front and center is climate change. Absolutely. In the news recently with the global student-led climate strike last month, the students demanded immediate action. They called climate change sure. a, an emergency. You were at right. one of the protests in DC. Yes. We have a picture of you holding yes. a sign and, and the sign says, the oceans are rising, so are we. What are your thoughts? What was it like to be amongst the students in DC at this uh, it was strike? Pretty, it was pretty exciting. And you know, sometimes people talk about students as being apathetic, but they are real leaders on issues like climate change and preventing gun violence. And it was great to get out there and speak with them. And they have a, a, an urgent message. If we listen to the scientists, and that's what Greta Thunberg said when she was at Congress, you don't need to listen to me, listen to the scientists. We need to take action to reduce emissions and we need to transition to a clean energy economy. So on the Science, Space and Technology Committee and on the Select Committee on the Climate Crisis, we are looking for uh, 
policies and practices across the country and around the globe that are working? Where are we doing a good job of reducing carbon emissions? Where can we improve? What are the policies that are going to help not only transition to the clean energy economy, but also make sure that everyone has a job and a piece of, uh, of the economic um, piece of this where we don't want to put anyone out of a job. We want to make sure people have the skills they need to work in clean energy and in other local industries. You're the only Oregon congressional member yes. on that House Select Committee on the Climate. And Nancy right. Pelosi chose you for that. I'm honored. And co-chair of the House Oceans Caucus. You've yes. introduced a resolution highlighting the findings of a new UN report on what's happening to our right. oceans in this changing climate. Right. And you wrote a blog about it. And I just want to read an excerpt from your blog. And this is what you wrote about the UN report. You said the the findings are dire. The climate crisis is causing devastating effects from the remote deep ocean floor to the most pristine Arctic and mountain regions. And you concluded by saying, the health of our ocean reflects the health of our planet. And for too long, our ocean has literally taken the heat for us. I'm committed to responding to the science and making these ocean-centric solutions a priority as we get our nation on a path to net zero emissions no later than mid-century. What do you hope your resolution achieves? Well, this is to highlight the seriousness of what's happening with uh, most of our planet is covered by ocean, and the ocean absorbs carbon emissions. And it's it's really taken the heat, but that is affecting the, the conditions in the ocean. It's becoming warmer, more acidic. That's affecting marine life, killing off coral reefs. It affects our shellfish industry and our fishing industry. So we need to work on reducing those emissions, uh, but also the ocean can be part of the solution. Um, next week, I'm going uh, to uh, help celebrate the launch of the uh, wave buoy that was manufactured right here in Portland that's going to help harness the power of the waves. So there are things that we can do to help the ocean be part of the solution. And as part of the Oceans Caucus, we've been working on uh, studying ocean acidification, which is a condition that is harming the health of the ocean, but also cleaning up the ocean. We've seen um, significant problems from marine debris, including plastics. So we're working on that as well on a bipartisan basis. We only have about a minute left, but I want to touch on that you're holding town halls all yes. across the district from yes. Beaverton to Scapoose right. to Six Gearhart. Of them. Six of them. Uh, what's the number one concern that you're hearing from people in these town halls? What are they asking? People are, people are there uh, really questioning uh, the administration and the president's, uh, the, especially the, the uh, request to Ukraine for, for uh, finding dirt on a, a potential political opponent. Uh, and this is a constitutional issue, not a political issue. We have three separate branches of government, and as someone who is um, sworn to uphold the Constitution, I take this very seriously. It's a serious and challenging time for our country. Um, but the founders, when they drafted the Constitution, uh, put in checks and balances, and the reason they put impeachment in the Constitution is because they were concerned that the executive would have too much power and would use that power to betray trust and perhaps use it to help himself get reelected. And so I look at this as a constitutional responsibility, which is why I supported the impeachment inquiry. But that's what people are, are asking about. Other things as well, like health care, cost of higher education, uh, and climate change. But I think that's tops at the town hall meetings I've had. Well, thank you so much for joining us here on Straight My Talk. Pleasure. Always a pleasure. Thanks for watching. Don't forget you can find Straight Talk also as a podcast. Have a great week.